Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about my trip last fall to Banff, Alberta, a mountain resort town in Banff National Park, which is Canada's first national park in our side of the Rocky Mountains. It is only about an hour and a half drive away from my home city of Calgary, so it's pretty much my go-to Canadian park. Basically, in October 2019, there was a WHO conference there where I got to present one of my research projects. So I was working most of the time, but I managed to do some sightseeing and photo walks in my free time. The weather back then didn't look too promising though. We normally start getting winter storms around October here in Alberta, and we were having a blizzard during the week when I needed to be there. I was actually scared to drive, so I took a shuttle bus service from Calgary International Airport to Banff, and that was nice. That said, the weather was great for taking some evocative wintry mountain scenes, and I'm pretty used to the cold anyways. I really liked how the mountains just faded out into the misty clouds. I think there's this melancholic feeling to it that just draws me in. I also managed to grab a hotel room that had this view of the river and the mountains which was beautiful. Camera gear-wise, I decided to bring my trusty Minolta SRT202 paired with 35-70mm zoom lens. For the film, I brought two rolls of Lomography Color Negative 800 because I thought I would need that extra ISO in case the weather stayed overcast. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you'd know that I really trust this camera. It's fully mechanical and built like a tank, and it hasn't failed on me even in very cold weather. It does require batteries for its light meter, but the camera can function without that. As for Lomography's Color Negative 800, I really like how vibrant this film renders colors. It does tend to look a little on the warm side, but nothing unnatural or garish. I also think that this film's grain added extra character to the misty landscape scenes. There are many things to see even just in the town of Banff. For this first photo walk, I decided to just follow the river path from my hotel to this lookout view where you can see the historic Banff Springs Hotel. It started snowing again while I was doing the photo walk and my iPhone died from the cold, but my probably 30 year old analog camera pulled through. In the following days, the conference had a short excursion to Lake Louise, which is another 40-minute drive from the town of Banff. It's one of Banff's famous lakes, and I can definitely see why. It even has a hotel built right in front of it. As you can see in here, the sun was high up in the sky when we got there. I didn't have a lens hood for my lens, so a lot of my photos ended up with flares in them. I think some strategic positioning of the flares added a nice touch to some of the photos though. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Next we went to Moraine Lake, which you might recognize from a Windows 10 wallpaper. The view you're seeing here is from just a little below the top of a rock pile. Um, which I really wanted to hike up higher, but it was slippery as heck and I wasn't wearing the right shoes. The sun was also shining directly in front of me, which I think isn't so good for photos. I think the best time to be there is during sunrise or when the sun goes lower beyond the mountain peaks, but I was working with a conference schedule so I couldn't really do much about it. 
I do want to acknowledge that Banff is located within the Treaty 7 region of southern Alberta, which is home to the Stony Nakoda nations of Chiniki, Wesley, and Bearspaw, the Tsitsina First Nations, and the Blackfoot Confederacy comprised of the Six Zika, Ghana, and Pekani nations. If you've noticed that the color of the rivers and lakes here in Banff look turquoise, it's because we pour coloring in them. Kidding! Basically, the water here comes from glaciers and has a lot of glacial silt or rack flower in it, which refracts light in a certain way, giving that distinct turquoise hue. The best time to appreciate this is early morning when the waters are calm and still, just before the winds come in. You'll get this glass lake effect which is so beautiful. And since Banff is pretty much in the mountains, you get to see wildlife just hanging around every so often. It's best not to approach these creatures though, and I'm really glad I chose to bring an OK zoom lens during that time. During my last day, I decided to take a hike up Tunnel Mountain, which is the small mountain right where the town of Banff is located. The hike is pretty easy and just a little over 4 kilometers round trip. Again, the path was icy and slippery when I was there but hiking up to the summit was worth it. From its summit, you get to see the surrounding mountains as well as the town of Banff itself. I wish it wasn't so hazy that day though. It could be my fault, but it seems the film didn't handle the haze and direct sun so well. My photos look too grainy for my liking, but it's okay I guess. Here's how it looks like on my phone. Aside from admiring the nature, the town of Banff itself is pretty neat. It has many shops that cater to tourists, but you'll find a local gem here and there. The food was great too. There's a lot more to Banff than what I have shown in this video, so if you ever get the opportunity to come and visit, I sure hope that you do so in order to see the beautiful place for yourself. I have so many good memories of Banff, and I'm really proud to showcase something from where I live. So, thank you for watching. Please let me know what you think of Banff or this video in the comment section down below. If you liked it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers!